been happening to in young people is that because of their perception about time, that they have a lot of time, there is no immediacy for excellence and success. And uh, they have dreams, almost all of them do, but not many of them have a vision. They can't actually envision themselves. So one of the things that I would leave with you today as a tool of empowerment is that you need to see yourself in the cockpit of an aircraft piloting that aircraft. Or if you want to be a fashion designer, you need to see yourself actually, what is it that fashion design? Tell me, they, 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 they design, they draw it, they, 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 they garment, they choose the, the fabric, you know. Whatever it is, you need to start to see yourself in the room. You need to vision yourself in the room. And then you need to start to take the steps to get it. You need to plan. So it's a dream, a vision, and then a plan. All of that is good. You also have to execute. You have to do it. And that is where the power within you comes, comes into play. So my job today is to help you to place all of that into context. But you have to receive it. You have to have a conversation within yourself to say, power is within me to achieve my dream and vision. And I can plan. And your teachers are here to help you with the plan as to how to get to that dream that, that you have. You always have challenges in life. There's nothing is ever easy. And some people are fortunate, and you looking on and they might say, wow, you're so lucky. But they have their own stories. Right? Pay attention to your story. I say the other message I want to give. Pay attention to your story. Pay attention to your business, to your dream, to your vision. As young people, yes, you have your individual responsibility. Pay attention to your own story, but you don't exist in a vacuum. In fact, whilst you are pursuing your own dreams and visions, the possibility of achieving them is heavily dependent on what is happening within your society. So, it is important that you develop a sense of civic awareness. Nobody can tell you what that is. You know what's going on around you, generally, yes. Nobody can give you another. Love for your country. Love for your country. Civic awareness. So, you know, civic represents the um, civic the, the idea. Uh, um, is is the duty of a citizen. So you are all citizens of a country, and you have duties. For example, you have a duty to vote in selecting your government as part of the democratic process. Um, you have a duty to report crime. Yes, yes, it's part of your civic duty. You have a duty to obey the law. So, part of being in the society is not just the rights that you enjoy, 
but it is the responsibilities and duties and obligations that accompany those rights. In fact, you can't have those rights oftentimes without you exercising your civic duty. So a part of being excellent personally and brilliant personally is your civic awareness and how you develop that and grow that. Schools are a good place to promote that attribute in our young people. You get civic awareness, obviously, through set courses of study. We still do social studies, or we, have, we change that. There are other, you have um, religious education, social studies, history, history um, a couple of others, a couple of other courses of study um, that help you to understand any of the, the issues that are in your society. But civic awareness and civic duty is not just academic. It is more so what you do, very practical. So you start by joining your service clubs. Volunteerism is a big part of your civic duty. Many persons who are here are volunteering. In fact, this event that we have is as a result of volunteerism. And you, in pursuing your own personal objectives, should also consider it an important personal objective to give back to volunteers. 